Charlie Poof's light switch campaign just might be the most organic campaign for music distribution yet. Here is why. We actually take a look at three major things. The first thing is how he set up the whole thing. So basically the first phase of the song release, if you consider it a release and it's not doesn't turn out to be a joke. As of now, the song hasn't been released yet. Phase two is how he creates then even more anticipation and phase three obviously would then be the song release. So let's first dive into phase one, how the song actually came to be. I think the truth is actually not that this is a completely designed social media campaign as you would think it might be, but the truth probably is somewhere in between. So. If we have the two extremes of this being totally planned out from day one and every single TikTok being completely planned out with the words and things like these, and on the other hand, we have this all being truly organic. So Charlie Poof really sitting there and sitting there and, and thinking like, oh yeah, what if this was a song? And then he just records the TikTok. I think it's somewhere in between, obviously, because these are two extremes. I think he probably wanted to try out TikTok and he probably had this idea for a song and I don't think this whole thing is completely set up. But at the same time, it's kind of genius, even though maybe not intended, it is really genius. And let's now discuss why this is so genius. So the major problem when marketing things is that things that need to be marketed often have no intrinsic intrinsic marketing built in. So when it comes to content creation, I would say that there are two different things. The first one is a content type that creates basically interest in itself. And the other type, so this could be also used as marketing. You could create content that creates interest in itself. So it basically creates not only interest for the content itself, but because it is distributed to video platforms and also audio platforms such such as such as podcasts the thing is that it just creates so it on a, it's on its own is already something that can be consumed but at the same time it creates interest for something bigger where this podcast or this video is only a part of and the other thing is something that's truly marketing so it's basically saying click on this other thing it's basically an ad you could say and the big distinction now is obviously that the ad itself is nothing that can be consumed on its own. Of course, an ad on itself can also be funny. And this is the case for many of these modern ads, ads because these get better and better and nobody wants to watch somebody reading one minute of benefits for a product. One minute, this is not something that works anymore, I think. So when it comes to Charlie Poof now, what he has kind of realize probably is that it makes much sense also as a musician in order to not only market the music but also to create interest for the musician itself to be on social media. I mean many musicians are already on social media and of course it's a debate whether this is all just to market their songs or it's just to create interest for the greater person of the person itself, so the greater topic of the person itself and also what this person does and this also kind of works. It works because we as humans, of course, are interested in specific things like this one soundtrack, but we are also interested in how it came to be. We are also, and I would say, one of the major things we are interested in is other people, because other people are something we can relate to, we can aspire to, and we can use as a template maybe for our own actions. And now, if we now connect these two things and say somebody wants to create an organic campaign that is kind of content that can also be consumed on its own instead of marketing is it. So just an example here at this point. If you said you had a new song, the problem is kind of, of course, you can do previews and things like these. You can go around the world and onto different shows, onto different radio shows and kind of preview the song. But before the song is actually released, this doesn't really make sense because then what is the call to action people can actually do? Nothing. Because the people cannot stream the song and since this is something that is now basically the standard, streaming songs, then the people just are left without, they are left with the anticipation, but without something to to basically release this anticipation. 
and this creates a kind of a problem but at the same time this is kind of also i mean it's kind of devilish you could say it's kind of i mean it's not really devilish i mean these are just things but at the same time it's like promising something to somebody but then not but then the thing is if you if you say that if you make or create anticipation for something and then then you don't offer something to release this anticipation then it just becomes bigger and bigger or some people might also get bored this could also happen but in general what happens if the same as if you are a child that is looking forward for a birthday for example um it knows the birthday will come it knows the present for example will be there but the more it is looking forward to to this birthday and actually it just creates this bigger and bigger anticipation and the moment itself is actually not the thing this also plays in line with the dopamine system which actually is responsible for our motivation for many things because dopamine is not really the reward for actually doing the things it rewards us with so for example achieving things we want to achieve but instead it's the anticipation that creates already the dopamine release so it's the anticipation of basically the, the reward or the thing that is then rewarding so now this is kind of the build up the build up is i think the general strategy was that maybe he just wanted to be on tiktok charlie poof or maybe it was kind of a bigger thing that he thought oh yeah maybe i could just create some interest some interest for me as a person and also for me as a musician and just build up anticipation for my future releases in this way and also for other things he might do in the future we already have seen charlie poof on other social media platforms as youtube and therefore it was not the biggest step i would say now we are still in the first phase because the second phase is already how to increase the pressure even more the anticipation even more so now we are in the first phase i think it is truly kind of it happened organically of course i'm not the judge <coughs> to judge these things but at the same time i think it doesn't make sense as a, as we already discussed that this thing was completely planned of course to a certain extent maybe but another extent is just taking your phone and then just just recording a TikTok because it's very easy and it's very low barrier, low entry, and therefore it is not that hard. And also, it doesn't really matter if it seems or if it was rehearsed, at least it seems that it wasn't. So now he creates these TikToks. If you haven't seen the TikToks, you probably are not watching this video, I guess. So, but nevertheless, I will include the kind of the plot of the videos. So the plot of the videos is this. Charlie Poof sits in his studio, probably at his house, and is like, what if there was a song that was like, doom, 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 and then he basically creates the part of the song that he just sang. So this could be drums, this could be an electric guitar. And when it comes to the light switch, he first creates these different parts of the song, and then he creates... <coughs> and then he creates basically another sound, he adds another sound, and this is the light switch sound. So he searches around the studio and is like, maybe just another just another sound. Like, And then he find, finds a light switch and he records it with his mic. I think the process was kind of there. I mean, this is not something you plan. And I don't think, I mean, there is truly not a whole production team behind all of this, but it's just Charlie recording this. Maybe he had the help of one or two other persons, but I don't think there was like a 10 production team like oh yeah and let's just try to make it as naturally as possible so therefore i think the whole idea process and also the recording of the ideas was truly something that happened i guess just the way it looks like of course social media i mean you record for example different takes often of the same thing and then you stop again and you say the same thing again and of course it becomes better over time but nevertheless i think this was something that was not recorded in like three days so the next step is then uh, so he has the song then he has a few other tiktoks where he basically says oh yeah i created a song and i cannot get it out of my head and so there are a few other tiktoks like these so this is step one the song is basically in the draft phase i would say and he already created anticipation because people like the song already also it's just really insightful you could say because people are interested obviously in Charlie Poof and also in his music and even though some people might not be interested in Charlie Poof 
A lot of people, like me for example, that also make a little bit of music on the side or just play an instrument, are just maybe interested in the process of how a song comes to be and therefore it's not only basically to his fans but also to the people who are kind of maybe heard a Charlie Poof song and then are just interested in how a song actually is made. So now we enter phase two and phase two is now how to create even more pressure. We already discussed that in phase one he created basically the first few TikToks and now phase two is basically this because people are have seen millions of people have seen these TikToks and millions of people have also this melody in their head. Richard Dawkins for example says that or he searched for an analogon when it comes to genes. So, so he searched for an analogon in the, in the space of ideas that would be comparable to how genes are actually spreading through populations. When it comes to evolution theory, genes are basically the things that want to be spread. It's not individuals, but it's actually genes. And it's not genes, I mean, of course the word is identical. It's not genes as pens, but it's genes as genetical information. So now these genes are actually in our body and whenever they benefit the individual or just a slightly bit, then over, over the next generations, the distribution in the whole, in the whole population changes actually. Because then these people basically have more, more children, not really children, but when it comes to evolution in general, it doesn't, it's not specifically children. I, I just didn't think of a term, I couldn't think of a term that was the broader term. Now I have the broader term, it's offspring. But when it comes to now ideas, he thought that maybe they just spread similar. Therefore, in his book, uh, the selfish gene, Richard Dawkins actually coined the phase or the word meme. So why am I even bringing this up? Because if you watch this TikTok and millions of people watch these TikToks and then this idea spreads and this idea, the meme spreads, spreads actually similar to a gene and possesses these people. And sometimes this can mean that these people are actually remembering the melody again and again and again. And if you don't are maybe musically a little bit able, then this could mean that you just create your own version of the song. This, this meant that in phase two, lots of people that were also maybe had music as a hobby, for example, they just recreated the song and also put the different parts Charlie Poof already showed in the different TikToks just together and made it into a song and released it to YouTube. Not really released it, but it just posted it to YouTube. And then, so this is the one part that the idea now, this melody, just spreads like a meme into the minds of the users or the viewers. And now there is another layer. And for this layer, I'm not really sure how it actually worked out. I generally don't know. This is just a suspicion I have. So there is basically a music producer who produced a lot of pop songs over the last two decades, probably. And this music producer is actually kind of a friend of Johnny Poof, but it seems like he turned on him. It seems like he now criticized his songs and he releases TikToks and his name is, I think, Benny. And he just releases TikToks where he just um, badmouths Johnny Poof, basically. Badmouths his TikToks where he talks about his perfect pitch, badmouths the light switch songs and basically demands that he quits music entirely. So. Of course, uh, a person could be generally this bad, genuinely this bad, and also generally want to, want to kind of harm another person. But at the same time, it's, I mean, it's kind of common knowledge that if you, I guess it's common knowledge, if you want to, so drama, basically. So what I'm trying to say is this, if you publicly, so on, so I'm posting on TikTok, that's kind of publicly, I guess, want a bad mouth for another person, then the interest for this other person just goes up compared to the situation where you just didn't bad mouth the other person. Therefore, you create drama. And this is also what happens with many YouTube channels and competing YouTube channels that they just create drama for themselves and hype up a situation that was maybe a small little, small little fight in the beginning, just more and more because it increases the anticipation for both sides because kind of because of tribalism, because we actually want to say, oh yeah, but I am with this, with this YouTube channel and you are with this YouTube channel and now we can fight each other. 
I mean, that's maybe the idea that is behind it, the tribalism. But at the same time, what this person now does, let's actually look it up. I just cannot talk about it without looking it up, so therefore I just look it up. So his name is Benny Blanco, and they actually made a song together during the pandemic, during a live stream. And also, they probably are friends, or were at least friends to some point. Now, to which extent this is kind of designed, basically. So, and to which extent this is kind of Benny Blanco mocking Jolly Poof just online, we will never find out, probably. Maybe they will be, they will meet again and they will be friendly, and that's for many people. And a hint that it all was kind of set up. So here is what I think. Um, I think it doesn't really matter what it is, whether the one is true or the other. What it is, is basically just increasing anticipation again, because now they have kind of this fight in between them. It's like Jolly Poof is playing the one who is maybe not playing, maybe intentionally playing, maybe not intentionally playing, the one who basically is the one who is mocked and Benny Blanco is just the one who mocks him. And now, <laughs> yeah, my, I mean, it's just like with all these YouTube channels, because there is this food and feed, feud, feud, I think it's spoken feud, in between those two, it actually just creates anticipation for lights, which even more and more and more and more, because now people also watch Benny Blanco and Charlie Poof, so basically, the content Benny Blanco makes about Charlie Poof and therefore the views about or for Charlie Poof just in general or the interest for Charlie Poof in general just goes up and up and up. So now this is basically how to now increase the pressure even more, the anticipation pressure and to make people even more hyped for the song because they heard it already, they know what it sounds like, they just want to listen to to the song at this point on their headphones. So whereas in the past it just so when the Beatles probably, when the Beatles wanted to advertise their new album, they couldn't really advertise the album with the album itself. So basically not with the content itself, because, I mean, they could go from radio station to radio station, but only from the point on where the new album or the new singles were actually released. And now it's different because you can just show different things and they might not even get copyrighted because if something is not released, then there is no copyright upon it probably. So now we have this situation where Charlie Poof basically created this huge anticipation for himself and also for the song Light Switch. Then we have this phase two where he intentionally or not intentionally increases the anticipation even more by having this opponent now who additionally to Charlie Poof already natively making content that basically intrinsically inherently creates interest for creates interest for the content, but also for Charlie Poof and his songs. And now we have this phase two, and now the phase three, what it actually means or when what happens when the song is released. So basically in the beginning, Charlie Poof said, if enough people pre-save the song, then he would, so if the anticip anticipation for the song is actually high enough, then he would release the song. And now it hasn't been released. And also in phase two, how to increase the pressure even more. This was one of the early TikToks. He basically had someone call him during a TikTok and be like, oh yeah, but you have to finish the song. So this, this is basically another thing. So if we took take a look at it psychologically, kind of, then we see the Charlie Poof in all of these different scenarios is just a just an artist, a lonely artist who creates, but he gets mocked by Benny Blanco. And he also has this pressure by these other people, probably his producer or his label, I don't know. And... <laughs> Basically, this prevents Charlie Poof from getting all the hate that is released online to directly hit him. Because it's not really him, because probably the production company or the distribution company or the label just doesn't release the song or has a set release date because that's just how things in the music industry work. Of course, he could just upload the track himself to a random distribution service. But that's probably also not really how it goes. And that's probably also not what he does, because this is just something he probably has outsourced. So therefore, I mean, he is in this situation and that he is mocked by, Bl by Benny Blanco and he has this pressure from his label or whoever called him. 
At the same time, of course, he's Charlie Poof, he has a lot of money, and these people are working for him because he's the artist. Of course, he just might have a contract with a certain label that says you have to release a certain amount of number or singles a year. I don't know about this. But at the same time, he's basically in this position, and he is the one who basically creates it all. It's him, it's his music, and everything else is just connected to him. So now we have Phase 3, and Phase 3 is the actual music release. And what happens then is that he doesn't need to really market the song anymore. And that's what the whole thing is about, whether it's intended to be or not intended to be. But if you think about the Beatles again, that they cannot release the album until it's released. What now happened is, compared to the Beatles, you advertise the song basically with something that's really related to the song itself. People already listen to the song. People already know that it sounds good and that they will listen to it. The only thing that prevents them from listening to it is that the song is not released and therefore not on Spotify, Apple Music and so on. This now means that the anticipation just builds and builds and builds until maybe the people just hate the song and the whole thing so much that they won't even listen to it as a kind of a protest. But before this happens, I mean, because people also probably don't believe it's Charlie Poop's fault that the song isn't released this, for this long. This also means that the hate spiral kind of does not go against Charlie Poop and his song, but much more about random other things we don't know about. It's just like in a movie, because we don't want people to hate the main protagonist, therefore we just project all the things that are banned onto another person that's called the antagonist of the main protagonist. And the antagonist in this scenario is Benny Blanco. Now, when the song actually really is released, we have this big anticipation. We have these people that just will listen to the song instantly and probably already like it because it's in their head. It's spread like a meme. And what happens now is from the moment on he releases the song, people actually will listen to it because the anticipation is already there. And when a song is actually released, here is what happens over time. If the song is again played in radio, and radio, at least a few years ago, and now in different playlists, if you hear a song again and again and again, and if you are exposed to things again and again and again, just in general, this is kind of the exposure fallacy. If you are exposed to things again and again and again, then regardless of your initial reaction or whether your initial reaction to these things was positive or negative, the more... So there is a level, and let's just draw a graph real quick here. So this is basically the zero level, the neutral level, and anywhere from... So this is the start. And now, if something is exposed to you over time and again and again and again, let's just say we start at the neutral, and you are neutral towards this thing. The more you actually are exposed to this thing, the more you actually like it. This and even if you didn't like something in the beginning, so basically if it started below zero, the more now it it just is the same thing. So basically over time, this whole threshold where you like the thing or how much you like the thing just increases. So it basically is a linear equation at this point in time. Not really linear probably, but because, <laughs> yeah, well, that's just a simplification. But what I'm trying to say is this, when a song usually is released, it gets released and then people haven't heard it before and because people haven't heard it before there is this phase where people have to get used to the song until they like it and even if they don't like a song in the beginning sometimes this happens obviously but again it doesn't really matter how much they like it what matters what matters is the more they listen to a song the more you are exposed to a certain thing this can be a certain food for example if you want to change your diet and you just eat healthy clean foods and don't eat the other thing then this also happens you just will like these foods more there has been a study for example with children where children just had to eat some veg vegetable i think it was asparagus or something and they just ate it over time and it doesn't really mean that the liking increases but the basically the the entry to making the call to action. So when it comes to asparagus, I mean, call to action is not really something we now can use because it's a, a phrase from a different, from marketing basically. But if these, these children 
were exposed to the asparagus and should eat it in the beginning, then they ate a certain amount of it. And then a few weeks after, after, became, after they became used to it, they just ate it because of the exposure effect. They just ate a little bit more. They just, the amount they ate just increased. And what I'm trying to say here is that the exposure effect usually has to have a certain time where it actually can work. And this is the reason you then hear the song again and again on the radio, on maybe in the past TV shows, maybe nowadays on TikTok. And with TikTok, it's the same. Just think about how TikTok, I mean, I probably will make another video about TikTok and how it actually works together so well with the music industry. It's basically by using this exposure effect. The more you are exposed to the song and you also build associations with things you already like, like this one TikTok video where the song is used. And then you get served another TikTok video where the song is used again. And it just begins, the meme in your head just begins to start. It's basically like Inception. The idea is planted and the more you are exposed to it, the more it begins to grow. And this is what needs to happen for a song when it's released or traditionally what needed to happen for a song to be released. And now, with campaigns like these, when the exposure is already there before, because we already listen to parts of the song, it's the same with movie trailers. The more you watch a movie trailer, of course, the more you know already about the movie, but the more you also are exposed to the story plot of the movie. This doesn't really mean that, of course, th this is a balance between giving too much plot away for you for the movie to not be interesting anymore. And the same applies obviously also for music distribution. If you heard your whole song again and again, this applies to a certain extent because you don't have to buy the song anymore. You probably, if you listen to the song, you don't go on iTunes nowadays and buy the song for like $2 or $5 or $1, but you already have a music subscription. So it doesn't really matter to you. The only thing you have to do is save the song on Spotify and then listen to it. That's the only thing you have to do. So it's not, it's not even a cost for you because you already subscribe to a music music service. So basically the call to action is just to go on Jolly Poo's page and like the song. That's basically everything you need to do. You don't need to have a credit card purchase to pay it with PayPal or to go in a store and buy a vinyl of a song. That's not how it works these days anymore. And also because of the business model of the music industry streaming. So now we have all the things together we need. We have the exposure, the exposure effect over time. That means we don't have to be exposed to the song anymore because we already kind of like it. And if we don't like it, then that's something we already found out. And even if we didn't like it, it doesn't really change our emotions, the exposure effect, but it just lowers the barrier of entry to listening to the song again, just like the Asparagus. And then we have phase two, where there's even a storyline behind all of this. It's like, there is also kind of a documentary about it. Not really a documentary, but just imagine a documentary that builds up to the new release of a Beatles album. I mean, if you saw the documentary, of course you wanted to know how the album then actually turned out. And this is kind of what happens with these TikToks and also with the added story plots of Benny Blanco and also the producer calling him and pressuring him into releasing the song. And now we have the actual release we don't have to do much of anything. The only thing you have to do takes less than 10 seconds. It's to go on Spotify, on iTunes, not really on iTunes, but on Apple Music, and to search Charlie Poof. And then there's the release, and you just like it. Or you don't like it, but then you probably wouldn't have done the call to action. And that's how Charlie Poof created unintentionally or intentionally kind of a template for how you create anticipation in the age of organic social marketing or organic marketing on social media and to release basically a song without actually paying for marketing.